Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of the Draw Control Podcast. On today's episode, I'm joined by Stonehill women's lacrosse player Julia Kogan. In the 22 games Julia played with Xavier University, she scored one goal, had 18 ground balls, had 10 cost turnovers, and 10 draw controls. In 2023, Julia made the All Big East academic team. Welcome to the podcast, Julia, and how is everything going? Yeah, thank you for having me. It's going really well. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Just uh, a few more hours until it's the weekend, so I'm looking forward to it. Mm -hmm. Well, obviously, you guys are in the middle of fall ball right now. So how is fall ball going for yourself and your team so far this semester? Yeah, it's going really well. So we've had three play days so far, um, and we've only gotten better since then. We have 13 newcomers, including myself. So, um, you know, we're all just getting acclimated, and I think we're doing a pretty good job so far. Um, yeah, the team's looking strong, and um, yeah, looks pretty good. Yeah, how has that chemistry been building up over the past few weeks, especially with so many new players on your team? Um, it's actually been a lot easier than expected. I know it's a big change since last year with um, 13 new girls coming in, but all the freshmen look um, really good and they don't play scared and they play like experienced players. And, you know, it's good to have freshmen that know how to um, just walk into a team instead of being like scared and stuff. So I think all of us are meshing pretty well together already. So that's awesome. Now, what were some things that you've been working on this summer and in the fall to get ready for the upcoming season? Yeah, um, so I was definitely focusing on my strength a lot this summer. I lifted a lot. Um, and then, you know, of course, I did um, uh, the summer league. So just like pick up a stick once a, um, once a week to have some gameplay with some, you know, local girls it was super fun and competitive. And, you know, you can't get anything like um, – gameplay in the summer so that's always fun and then um, I definitely focus a lot on my defense and my defensive footwork because um, I you know my position switches all the time midi to defense back to midi you know so I focus on like my defense and my positioning and stuff like that. Yeah overall after all the lacrosse stuff how was your summer? Uh, did you do anything interesting? Uh, yeah I had a pretty good summer I mean stressful at the beginning of course but um, my family went on a trip to Spain, so that was pretty awesome. A nice little break. Nice, nice. What part of Spain did you visit? We went to Barcelona and Madrid. Oh, okay. I saw a lot mm -hmm. of things about Barcelona, like on the internet, like they're they're upset at tourists for coming there. I don't know if you had to deal with any of yeah, that. Yeah, we kind of noticed a little bit of that when we were there, but it was still super fun. That's good. Well, I'm glad you had a good time there. Yeah, Now let's thank talk you. about your recent transfer to Stonehill. So... Uh, what made you end up deciding to go into the transfer portal and how did you end up deciding to choose to go to Stonehill for the upcoming season? Yeah, so I'm really grateful for my time at Xavier. I had a great start. Um, I made some amazing friends and I learned a lot, but, um, you know, things were just changing and I was changing as a person and I just realized it wasn't the best fit for me academically, athletically, or personally anymore. So um, I just... Um, you know, I made a big change and I, I took a leap of faith and, um, you know, I was looking at some other school, a bunch of schools at the beginning of the summer. And then um, I talked to my coach, Coach Conover, and she is great. Um, so I came to campus and, um, you know, like the it's 30 minutes outside Boston, which is, I mean, you can't really get much better than that. Boston's an amazing city and like there's so many things to do and like lots of opportunities out here. And, um you know, um, Coach Conover really just like sold me. She's um, amazing. And she told me how amazing all the girls on the team are and how the team chemistry is always amazing. So that was definitely really important to me, especially coming from a team with such amazing girls um, and culture. So um, I, those are the two biggest things in the academics here. Um, there are, I mean, I get to uh, major in neuroscience, which is what I originally wanted to do. And I couldn't do that at um Xavier so that's also obviously an additional plus but yeah yeah that's awesome do you plan mm -hmm. on like living in the Boston area after you graduate I know you're from the Midwest so I'm curious if sort of that let was part of your decision trying to move out to a different area to see what that's like yeah so I actually definitely could see myself um in Boston I'm from like a suburb of Chicago so it kind of gives me a Chicago-like feel so mm -hmm. I can see myself here here or there so yeah we'll see yeah what happens. 
Well, obviously, thinking about the upcoming season, what are your goals and expectations with Stonehill? Have you guys sort of talked about that, or is it sort of just taking things day by day? Um, I think we're going to talk about it more at the end of fall ball, you know, just to get a better, a better picture of everything. But um, personally, they um, we just became D1 like three years ago. And so – but they, they we came in third in our conference last year. So I think that's pretty awesome. And I just – I think that we could win it all this year. We're in the – NEC. So I think um, Sacred Heart and LIU were ahead of us last year. So Sacred Heart's not in our conference anymore. I think we definitely have a really good chance, especially with um, our new team that's looking a lot stronger. So I think we could definitely win um, the NEC this year. Um, but individually, I'm just like looking to contribute to the whole team's success, like um, especially on the defense and on the draw. So, yeah. Well, let's transition now and talk about the beginning of your lacrosse career and kind of work all the way up to where you are now. So like we just met, talked about, you're from Elmhurst, Illinois. So talk about growing up there. How'd you start playing lacrosse? Who are some of your favorite lacrosse players and teams they like to watch as well growing up? Yeah, so lacrosse isn't the biggest in the Midwest, especially when I was growing up. I mean, Northwestern winning um, the national championship last year is obviously helping, but um, when I was little, you know, it wasn't too big, but I started playing in third grade, um, just like a small town league. I mean, it wasn't anything serious, but then it just kind of, I kept, I just stuck with it. I tried other sports too, but I just love lacrosse and for some reason, and I just stuck with it. And here we are. I mean, um, it was a great experience. I played for like a few teams and then I, um, got into club when I was a little bit older and, um, it was definitely hard being from the Midwest and lacrosse being so big in the East Coast. So it's definitely a different experience than most people, but it was still awesome. Yeah, and before college, you played for your high school with your community. So talk about your high school lacrosse days, what that was like for yourself and what's like your favorite memory from your high school lacrosse career looking back on it now. Yeah, we were never the team to win a state championship or anything because, um, you know, our school kind of had girls with like varying levels of commitment and skill level, but, you know, that kind of just helped me become the player I am today, um, become more of a leader. And um, we still had our great times. Like my favorite, we, my favorite memory is definitely just like being with the girls on the bus rides home and just like singing when or loss, like coming together and just like being with each other. And I just think that like kind of shaped um, who I am as a player and even as a person today. Um, and like who the teams and coaches that I look for. Now, you also play club lacrosse for true lacrosse before heading off to college. How did that experience sort of help prepare you for college lacrosse with Xavier? Mm -hmm. So um, obviously we had to fly to lots of tournaments um, and true was just so awesome. I played with a bunch of girls who were super committed to coming to practice and going to the tournaments every week in the fall and um it was just a lot of fun and the coaches at True were amazing. I got to work with like lots of different coaches throughout my time at True and I made some relationships, some special relationships with um, a lot of them and um, they definitely helped me get to where I am today and they even helped me um, um, in my transfer here because um, usually they, they help you with your recruiting process initially but then I also was able to contact and they were able to help me um, this summer too so it's kind of a network and a family that I'll never I'll never leave so that's awesome yeah that is awesome I'm glad they helped you out with that definitely especially during a stressful situation which is the transfer process as everyone else knows mm -hmm. now what was your initial recruiting process with with Xavier like and what made you want to go there versus other schools you might have looked at because when I was doing research for this podcast, I realized that Xavier was sort of a newer program coming up. So I'm curious sort of what led you to sort of go to a program that was just starting up. Yeah, um, well, Xavier's in, first of all, it's like in Cincinnati. So it's like, it was one of the closer schools to my home. And, you know, I was kind of scared to um, go super far away. Like I was like only 17 at the time. So um, I think that definitely helped. And um, being an inaugural program, it was definitely a scary and intimidating thing, but it was a once in a lifetime special opportunity. Um, my class consisted of like 20 freshmen and like five or six upperclassmen. And it was definitely um, a challenging experience, but, um, you know, 
it was unlike any other of my friends who went from home to school on the team because they went into a team with like culture and traditions but we were the ones that got to sit, make the traditions and set the culture at Xavier and that's something super special that people got to experience and I just thought that it was the right choice at the right time and I still stand with that I mean um, my time at Xavier made me who I am and the person I am and those friendships and people are amazing and um, you know it was just a, overall it was a great experience but I just definitely needed a change. What was like the biggest adjustment you had to make to college lacrosse as a freshman? Um, I think, I, I mean, probably everybody says this, but definitely the speed, the speed of the game and the transition from high school to college is um, ridiculous. Like you step on the field and you're like, whoa, everyone is um, so much faster and their sticks are faster and their feet are faster and everything is so high paced with the shot clock and everything. And my team didn't really initially realize that until we stepped onto the field in the fall because we were all freshmen. So that was another challenge at Xavier. But, um, you know, um, I think it's definitely um, a big adjustment that people need to um, go with and think about when they're going into college. Yeah, you got to play in the Big East Conference. Talk about what it was like being a part of that conference and the competition you face each game because – Obviously, you got teams like Denver, yourself, UConn. So it must have been a fun conference to be a part of for those two years. Yeah, it really was an incredible experience. We got to travel all over, um, like visited like all those beautiful campuses, UConn, Georgetown, Villanova, Denver, especially. That was crazy. But um, it was definitely challenging. I mean, to some of the top teams in the country and um uh, as an inaugural program, especially, I mean, it's super intimidating and we were always viewed as the underdogs, but um, I kind of, we kind of embraced that um, perspective instead of being like, oh, we're the underdogs. I mean, we're expected to lose. We kind of embraced it and it just taught us resilience and teamwork. And, um, you know, it was, it was definitely, we learned a lot throughout our games in the spring, but um it was definitely a good experience and overall pretty positive. So, How did you learn to balance both academics and lacrosse at such a high level for your first two years of college? Yeah, so, you know, time management is always a struggle for me. But um, I think that um, something that I've learned that helps is like writing down my schedule every day. Um, so you don't forget anything and you know exactly where you need to be and when and when you can plan out when to do your work and when to um, go to class and um, go to practice and such. Um, and one thing that definitely helped me as well is um, um, finding little pockets of time where you can like just bring your computer or bring your notebook and just like get some work done in those little pockets of time. Because at the end of the day, you're between classes and practice, you're not gonna have like a big chunk of time where you can just sit down and do homework. You kind of have to just fill in the space with your homework, so. Now, we obviously talked about the adjustments you had to make as a freshman in college lacrosse, but what do you think has been the biggest improvement you've made to your game since your freshman year? Oh, wow. Um, I would say probably my IQ. Um, it's definitely um, a, a perspective change, I would say, because coming from the Midwest and then like Ohio, I would say it's still Midwest, but it was still a little different from what I've known. And then now coming all the way to the East Coast, it's just like, a different style of lacrosse in addition to the different into the um the faster pace of the game and I just think that I just know a lot I just feel like a completely different player than who I was um what two or three years ago um a lot stronger a lot faster and but especially smarter like on the field now looking back on it now what's what was your favorite lacrosse memory with Xavier oh yeah um my freshman year we had a tournament in Chicago, um, so I got to go home, and we played Marquette and um, Oregon, and so my team, we all went to the Bean, and a lot of girls haven't been there before, and it was just super fun to take them down into, like, my homeland, kind of, and um, uh, we all went to my house and, like, had, like, a, it was kind of like high school, like, a pasta dinner with, like, my whole team, and then some people's parents came, and it was just so fun, and it was just, like, it just felt like home, like my two homes all coming together. So that was super fun. That's awesome. That's awesome. It must have been nice for your parents to have a quick drive to see you play too. Yes, for sure. 
So let's go on to a segment I like to call the non-lacrosse segment, where I ask you some non-lacrosse questions to get to know you more off the field. So first one is, if there was a movie made about your life, who would you want to play yourself? Um, I would probably say Jennifer Aniston. I think that she's so funny, and I think she would probably do a good job at encapsulating myself. What What about was your... you? Uh, I always joke about this because I don't know any actors that look like myself. So I would I always joke and say Ryan Gosling because it would be funny to have him play me in a movie because obviously we look nothing alike. So it would sort of be f funny for the audience to be like, why is Ryan Gosling playing this guy? They look nothing alike. So that's sort of who I would, that's who I would pick. And he seems like a good guy too. So now what was your favorite TV show growing up? Well, I'm going to have to go with Friends. I mean, I just love Friends. It's hilarious, and you can pick up anywhere, so everyone loves it. Next on the cross question I have for you is who has the best off the field style on the Stonehill women's lacrosse team? Um, I have to say my friend Calliope. Yeah, she wears jeans and stuff to class, and we're all in our sweatpants. We're like, well, yeah, so... Now, what is one thing outside of lacrosse that you're deeply passionate about? Um, I would say traveling. Um, I've been lucky enough, my family, um, we've traveled a lot throughout my time at home and, you know, just gaining these perspectives on life and seeing different places and seeing how different people live is just like a passion of mine and, you know, helping those when I can, especially when I'm traveling and seeing how they live is um, an awesome thing. And I just love doing it. What would you say is like the coolest place you've ever traveled to? Um, a few years ago, we went to Iceland and that was, it was pretty insane. It was unlike any other trip I've ever been on. So that was Yeah. probably my favorite. The only thing I know about Iceland is like they did that like skull chant during the Euros uh, a few years ago. I don't know if you remember that. That was a lot of fun. And then Yeah. I heard like their population is like really small as well. Like it's such a big country, but not uh, not many people, I guess, live there compared to other places in Europe. Yeah, that's true from what I've seen of it. There's not that many people there. So, but it's still super fun. Definitely, definitely. Let's get back to some lacrosse questions now. My first one is what should be done to help grow women's lacrosse from your perspective? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I think that's a really important thing, especially being a girl from the Midwest um, who grew up with it not being super popular. But something I would say that is important is like having... teams in the NCAA no matter what division you know just like hosting clinics and camps where like the players can actually interact with the girls because I remember when I would go to like the Northwestern camps like it would be super fun to like actually talk with the girls on the team instead of like coaches because you know coaches can be scary and like only give you certain information but the girls like being with them and like being like oh I can grow up to be just like her it's like I can actually relate to them. And I think that would help a lot more girls want to start playing and get their head in the game. Yeah, for sure. Well, before we end off this podcast, Julia, do you have any shout outs you want to give and who should we have on the pod next? Oh gosh. Um, I think you should ask Emma Cecil. She plays at Flagler. She would be great. Awesome. Awesome. We'll definitely reach out and see if she, ha what she has to say, but Julia, I just want to say thank you so much for taking time out of your day and coming on. I really appreciate it. I think you're a great player and an even better person. And I just want to let you know that. And obviously wishing you all the best stuff for your first year at Stonehill. I know you're going to kill it. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you for having me.